see if you bastards can do 90. So, Nightcrawler just came out last Friday. I actually got to see it a day earlier on Thursday. A uh, little early screening, one day early. It's fine by me. Uh, I was pretty interested in seeing this. I had seen the trailers look pretty good. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, he's a really good actor in my opinion, so always kind of interested to see what he's going to do, and this looked like a pretty unique role for him, something kind of different. It's uh, written and directed by a guy named Dan Gilroy. It was his first time directing. He has a couple other screenplays that he's worked on. Uh, the Bourne Legacy, Real Steel, the movie with Hugh Jackman. A um, couple earlier ones before that, but not, not a whole lot on his um, resume. He's also uh, the brother of Tony Gilroy, who's written quite a few screenplays. He wrote all of the Bourne movie screenplays, and he wrote and directed uh, Michael Clayton with uh, George Clooney a couple years ago. I think it was about seven years ago now, Just looking at it here. So anyways, but so he's kind of been known in the industry. And he's actually, he's married to uh, Rene Russo. He's been married to Rene, Rene Russo for like over ten years. Um, she's also in this movie, but I'll, I'll get to her when I talk about the plot. So, <clears throat> going into it, I thought it was going to be kind of, I thought it was going to have a bit of a uh, vibe like uh, Drive did. Because it's set in L.A. Uh, and then in the trailers, they uh, prominently showed his car. He's driving like a Charger. I thought it was going to be kind of similar, maybe a similar setting, but it wasn't really too much other than um, those two things, L.A. with some car action. But our main main character is Jake Gyllenhaal, plays Lou Bloom, and right away we get a bit of an idea that <clears throat> he'll do anything for work. He's at a, a junkyard, and he's collecting scrap metal. He's going to go sell it. Uh, right away he sees a security guard, and wrestle him to the ground. We don't really see what he does to him, but when he gets up and drives away, he has his watch. Uh, it's a pretty nice watch, so that was interesting. Right away, you get a, an idea of who this character is. He's kind of ruthless if he needs to be, and he'll do whatever he can to get paid and get some money. And then we also get introduced to his his mannerisms, his, his uh, type of speech patterns and stuff like that. He's trying to promote himself and uh, get a job with the the scrapyard owner who he's selling some some metal to but the guy says right away he's like no he, he just doesn't he keeps refusing him keeps denying him and he says i'm not gonna hire any any damn thieves because he knows he, he stole all this stuff that he's selling to him and then uh so as it goes on you know he does more and more he does a couple things to he gets a he steals a bike then he goes in actually before that he's driving just down the highway he sees an accident, pulls over, he's just kind of looking on, and while he does that, a couple guys run up past him with cameras, and they're video recording it, and he's instantly intrigued, and he's wondering what they're doing. He asks them, and they say, yeah, uh, we sell our footage to uh, news, news outlets, news channels, and they put it on TV for the news, and um, so it clicks right away, he knows he wants to do this. And that's when he goes, steals a bike, gets some money, starts getting his own equipment uh, and a scanner. And so then he's committed and he commits fully, um, is the, probably the easiest way to say it. And he eventually gets uh, some footage, gets some pretty gruesome stuff is happening. We see some pretty nasty crashes and he gets in there. He starts rubbing some of the other guys the wrong way though. One of those guys is played by Bill Paxton. He's always good. He has a lot of good lines. There's a part when he freaks out on Lou a couple times, and it's pretty funny. Paxton's always good for a laugh. But um, eventually, you know, he gets better and better, and he starts to afford his own uh, better equipment, and he hires, like, an intern named Rick to help him. And he also is, at the same time, he's developing this relationship with um, a specific news channel, and it's run by Nina has been a veteran at the news business for quite a while, and that's Nina's played by Rene Russo. So he's working with them, and he's selling him their stories, and eventually he starts getting into some pretty uh, precarious situations, and maybe he's manipulating some of the stuff that he's shooting and 
doing uh, possibly unethical things to get his shots, but you know, the they make headlines on the news when they're you know pretty graphic and stuff like that. So that's our story, and things uh, eventually build up and. The climax of this movie was really, really intense. It was, it was really good. I won't get into the details of it, but it was a great build up to the point, and uh, it really pays off well. I thought I like the ending of it, and so it's really interesting. Uh, a lot of people think this is funny, and there are parts of it that are funny, and it's also been described as a bit of a, a satire of like the news and the audience that watches the news and I, I understand that and I don't think it's a full-blown satire but he's a character uh, Lou is very interesting he has this weird weird way of talking it's like he's just reading out of a manual or something like he's memorized Wikipedia pages about everything and he's just very direct and it's just an interesting way of talking so he kind of he's almost kind of like he's um what like uh, Tony Robbins like a motivational speaker the whole time it's really interesting and it kind of gets you out of the movie in a sense and just like makes you realize you know this is a character and he's kind of extreme but it works well uh, John Hall gives a, a great performance I think he really owns it and he lost like 30 or 40 pounds for the role he looks really gaunt and he's usually a pretty big guy um, so yeah he looks pretty different and looks you know kind of sleazy and it's like, kind of creepy but He's a um, he's a very determined guy, and he ends up being you know really good at what he does, and he's good at manipulating people as well. So I think because of his performance, um, that there's a bit of rewatchability to this. I think it'd be interesting to rewatch it and just to, you know try to focus on his character and get a sense of you know what he's doing with it. Um, it's definitely worth a watch. I'm giving it a four out of five. It's in theaters right now, so I'd definitely check it out if you're looking for something. Um, interesting and it's also Nightcrawler it comes from the uh, that's the term that's used for these people who are going out sh shooting the footage and uh, giving it to the news stations they're called Nightcrawlers because you're you know usually at night getting this footage now just it's just an interesting look at a profession that you really wouldn't know about otherwise you know, I never even thought about uh, I don't watch the news really on TV very much but you know you don't really think about the people that are getting some of this footage so it's very interesting on that aspect. For movie connections, uh, like I mentioned before, I thought it was going to be kind of like maybe Drive, which it's not really. You know, it's kind of like a solo performance, like Ryan Gosling was in that, and it's set in L.A., but they're pretty different movies. I think a uh, better comparison might be uh, Taxi Driver with Robert De Niro. You know, he's just kind of a, a loner as well, and he's kind of a weird dude and ends up getting a taxi job and you know, exploring New York and the seedy parts of it, so it's very similar to this. And then also, maybe because they kept showing the trailers and stuff for Network before the movie, but I think that movie is also kind of similar. That's satirizing the news quite a bit, so I think that's a good way of putting this. So it's a mashup of Taxi Driver and Network with uh, Patrick Bateman thrown in there. Uh, that was a kind of uh, comparison I kept making with uh, Jalen Hall's Bloom, Lou Bloom, kept thinking he's kind of like uh, Patrick Bateman in American Psycho, how he's very mechanical and the way he talks, you know, is very precise and stuff like that. So um, I think that'll be it. I'd check it out. It's uh, it's a good movie. So if you're looking for something to see in theater, I would definitely check this out. So I guess a sign off. I haven't had a tagline in a while, but this one has a good one. So if it bleeds, it leads.